Okay, the Welsh Rugby Union is planning to merge the Scarlets with the Ospreys. Um, it hasn't gone down well. It hasn't. Um, Ken Owens is a Scarlets player. He's in, he's the head of the Welsh Players Union, and he's come out and he said he's deeply concerned because there's no certainty. It's the toughest situation we faced. Uh, you know, Mike James, the Ospreys chairman, has quit in the meeting yesterday. He stood up at the first thing, and said, "I'm out. This is." A this is a mess that you guys are making. I refuse to be part of this process. You haven't listened to us. We were aiming to put a team out next year, and now you're saying you want to merge our team next year with the Scarlets when that's going against everything we've been saying to our fans and our investors. I'm done. So, yeah, it's a mess. And it appears that the Welsh Rugby Union clearly aren't listening to the players and fans and the stakeholders in the game, such as the sponsors and the investors and the chairman of these clubs. Otherwise, the PRB would have solved all these issues because they were... Primarily, the PRB was set up to solve the funding issue of centralised contracts. It's now, oh yeah, we know we're going to just have a new team in North Wales out of nowhere and we're going to merge two teams that are historically rivals over the last 16 years together. Considering that Welsh Rugby Union, if they want to have a new team in North Wales, they already own a team, it's called the Dragons. Move them. If you want to put up a new team in North Wales, you shouldn't have to merge two existing teams, you already own a team. It, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. And when you've got one of the key, the, the, the key Welsh players right now who's in charge, who's the head of the Welsh Players Union, going, we're not happy about this, we don't feel we're represented at the meetings, that says that this process is a joke. Welsh Club Rugby Union has, has not done well under professionalism. It has struggled compared to the likes of England and France. It has. And the risk is, if they go ahead with this merger, that's going to basically mean a full squad of players out of that merger are going to be without a club. At, at the top level, where are they going to play? Are they going to want to relocate to North Wales, uh, where they where they're unsure about the success of a team that that could fold, like the Celtic Warriors did in the season back in two thousand three, two thousand four, or are they going to go where they know that these clubs are going to give them certainty, such as England and France, where there is the money, or if they're a younger player, they, should they look across the Atlantic at Major League Rugby and the success and the growth that the game has had in the last couple of years in the US and Canada? There are three new teams uh, joining that league next season. Are they going to look with one eye across the Atlantic and as a younger player, as a fringe player, going, well, my career in Wales is done. I don't have a team to play for. But I'm eligible to play as a registered player. I'm a professional. I'm going to get my agent to contact a Major League Rugby team because they're allowed 10 overseas players and I'm going to make take take the leap. Because that's the option they're going to have is going to England and France where there is the money, which is what the Welsh Union don't want to happen. They're like, no, we want all our players to play in Wales. They have no option. The Welsh Union um, has been protectionist with their selection policy when it comes to the national side with these centralised contracts, saying that if you have less than 60 caps to be considered to, for selection for Wales, you have to play in Wales, unless there's exceptional circumstances or you're an exceptionally talented player, such as Josh Adams. So that's a protectionist policy, which has actually backfired, because before that policy was in place, the Welsh players were playing in the, wherever they could. They were playing in England, in France, in Wales. It didn't matter. They were playing rugby at a club that valued them. Now they feel undervalued by the Welsh Rugby Union. They have no certainty about where they're going to play. It's concerning, and it's undermining the Welsh national side right now as they're preparing for a key game that could define whether they get a Grand Slam or not against Scotland. Going into a World Cup, they have no certainty about where they're going to be playing next season. The World Cup is in Japan, the other side of the world. Players for Wales could be in camp at the World Cup, and they don't have a club to play for when they return. That is not a viable solution it is not right it is wrong and when you have a chairman who came out last week and said that we are concerned about re-signing players next year we have some financial issues however we are aiming and we have plans in place to put a team on the field after having some constructive meetings over the last couple of weeks with, with player agents and and and, and the stakeholders of the club when the offspace have come out and said we're going to field a team next year for the welsh rugby union to go up we want to have our, our new team in north wales by next season you are going to merge with the scarlets and we're going to continue with the merger talks whether you like it or not says they're not listening to concerns that both the Scarlets and the Offsprays and the players of both those clubs have with the process. So it's not transparent enough. And we have to look at the last time Welsh Rugby went through a major reorganisation. It was 2003. The last time they put a team out of nowhere was the Celtic Warriors. And look what happened. They lasted a year before they folded. All the teams currently in the Pro 14 have some link with a club that was there before 2003. So Llanethli have always had a club in Llanethli playing at the top level in Welsh Rugby. Uh, Newport Gwent, there were several clubs that merged together to form the Dragons. Now, now, now they are just the Dragons and the Cardiff Blues are just the Blues because for some reason Welsh Rugby Union decided to drop the place names from the teams that play in the Pro 14. 
It could be one of the reasons why there's not many fans turning up, because I don't feel an identity with the club that represents them. Just a thought. It's always pretty good to have, you know, the place name of where your team is from. It might actually help draw fans from that locality. Just, just a thought. Hence why the Celtic Warriors completely failed, because no one felt an identity with that team. There weren't enough fans supporting it. It failed catastrophically. Have Welsh Rugby Union learnt nothing in the last 15 years? No, they haven't. They haven't. The, the governance of the game in Wales is a shambles, and it completely undermines the national side. And this comes hot on the heels of World Rugby's announcement of the International League, which has gone down like a lead balloon. This proposed merger hasn't gone down well either with players, fans and officials. You just have to look at the responses on social media. You have to look at the responses on the Have Your Say on the BBC Sport website. It's 99% negative towards the proposal being proposed by the Welsh Rugby Union with this proposed merger. They're going to forge ahead with the merger talks regardless of what the Ospreys and the Scarlets players and officials think, which is wrong. They have to get the players on board because the players are the ones who are going to be most affected by any club merger or relocation because they have no certainty about their future. And rugby careers are notoriously short because of injury or ill health. And these players need certainty because where are they going to play? Especially in the World Cup year. This is a complete mess by the Welsh Rugby Union. They could have waited till after the World Cup for next season. They've decided to forge ahead with the blinkers on. And while I'm not a Welsh Rugby Union fan, I'm not a Welsh fan. I still think it's madness to undermine your national side and get and leave your players just up in the air with where they're going to play next year. It's, it's not managed well at all. It's been really poorly managed uh, by the WRE. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Place your comments below and I'll have some more videos for you soon.